And so you stay with us, but we are going to move to the second speaker and after we'll have a time for a question and answer. So the second speaker is Father Edmond A. So he's a professor of theology and philosophy, I'm sorry, professor of philosophy at University of St. Joseph in Macau. And so he's going to address us on the topic of transmission and reception of the devisement du monde in Europe. So welcome. Right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks to Father Rothlin for the invitation. He, he invited, last Easter, he invited me to submit a paper. And then uh, I decided to formulate a research question and think about um, the, the connection between uh, the Dominicans and Marco Polo, if any. And then uh, that's, that's why I'm here today. So I, I don't have anything original to say, actually. Um, but just to, to report um, what I have found out, and then uh, maybe we can uh, think about uh, East-West Dialogue. Right, so when, when we open up uh, uh, the, the text of uh, Marco Polo, um, Le Divi Simon du Monde, yes, of course, known as Il Milione, right? The, old, the original name was probably Le Divi Simon du Monde. So when we open up the text, we will find the name of two Dominicans and they became rather, shall we say, infamous, right? So we have uh, Niccolo and uh, William of Tripoli, right? And we know that they were, they were assigned to accompany the, the Polo family uh, to, to China in 1271, right? And there was a, they, they came to a point at a border where there was conflict and uh, the two friars decided to call it quits. So you carry on if you want and we're, we're going back. Yes. So this, you find this in the prologue of the text, right? So that's kind of disappointing, you know, for the Dominicans, right? Like they, they lack courage or they gave up, you know? <laughs> so the, the, the paper that I, I'm going to present is to try to rehabilitate the name of the Dominicans, right? And, and <laughs> try to show that Dominicans did something to help Marco Polo. You know? right. So it's about um, what the friars, the Dominican friars did to uh, transmit the text of Marco Polo. Right? So just, just a few remarks about the order of friars preachers, so we call them Dominicans because the, the founder is Dominic de Guzman, right? So the official name is uh, Order of Friars Preachers, right? They're popularly known as Dominicans, named after the founder, right? And they are a religious order uh, founded for mission of preaching uh, and they have a strong emphasis on, on study, right? So we, we hear a lot about Franciscans and Dominicans, right? And tra so traditionally, it's not it's not entirely true, right? But traditionally, uh, the preaching of the two orders were different. Right? In Saint Francis' vision was that uh, the friars would preach penance. Yeah, Saint Dominic's vision or aspiration, the charism, was that the friars would preach doctrine. Because uh, Saint Dominic was very concerned about uh, believers who were influenced by heresy, Albigensianism. So that would be one historical difference between Franciscans and Dominicans, right? And here is a very rough chronology of the foundation of the friars preachers, right? So Saint Dominic was from Spain, Calerega, and uh, he traveled mostly in Spain, France, and Italy. Right? So here you can see a very rough uh, chronology of the foundation of the order. Right? Toulouse, then Paris, then, uh, then he went to Italy, so the north, so Milan, and then uh, the Roman province, central, and then the southern part of Italy, Naples, 
Then later on, Hungary, Germany, and then England, right? So these these are so called the the first establishments of the order, right? So this helps us to to understand how Marco Polo got to know the Dominican friars. So here we are, right? So the relationship of Marco Polo and the Dominicans was quite uh, quite close, actually. Yes, I mean I. I would argue that the evidence suggests that Marco Polo was quite close to us. Right? Um, so, for example, there are records that uh, Marco Polo was present at the at the convent in Venice, right? Saints John and Paul. Right? He he is registered as a witness in some official documents, and he included the the convent in his will right? of thirteen twenty four. Uh, when, the year that he died, right? Right. So let's see some of the friars, Dominican friars, who were uh, involved in uh, reading and translating Marco Polo's text, right? So probably the most major figure would be Francesco Pipino, right? Uh, from from Bologna, right? And so he he might be the first person to translate the text from the original Franco-Italian to, to Latin, right? He completed it by 1322, could be earlier, but we're not very sure about the date of the completion, but certainly by 1322. The, the original text was, was finished by 1299 or so, the end of the 13th century, right? Somewhere around there. And so this became the, the, the most widely disseminated version, the Latin text, became the most widely disseminated text, a uh, version uh, in, uh, in, in England, in France, Italy, Portu now what we call Portugal and Spain, and so on. So Fran Francesco did a great help to enable people to read Marco Polo's text, right? Because the, the original is, a, is in a very strange uh, Franco-Italian. Right? Yeah, so it, it was made into the common language. Right? And it's also the, the most widely used text in the 14th century. Right? Uh, interestingly, the Pipino's version is the one that was used for translation into the other European languages, including Czech, French, Gaelic, and back to back to Venetian, Marco Polo's own language. Right? So strange. It goes, it goes back from through Latin, it goes back to Venetian. So now just a few comments about how the, the text was, was read and, um, and used by some uh, Dominican friars. Right? Yeah. So this, this was the Perhaps the we call it the reception of the text. So Francesco himself uh, used the text to compose uh, a study, a, hist a historical study. It's called the the Chronicon. Chronicon, yes, yes. And so this this text is um, uh, an attempted record of the history of the world. Uh, it it dates from seven fifty four to. 1317. Right? So we know that he finished the translation by this date because he completed this text, the Chronicron, in 1322. Right? And then uh, a colleague of his, Jacopo, right, used Francesco's translation and wrote a, also a historical study, the Chronica Imaginis Mundi. Another historical text, it was completed around 1334, right? Yeah. And it's, it's a universal history, right? It starts from the creation of the world until the 13th century. It's a very um, ambitious type of historical um, survey, right? a universal history. And then there were, there were some other friars who made attempts to use Marco Polo's text 
to to prepare uh, works for the purpose of preaching. Very Dominican, right? Yeah. To 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 <laughs> to look for sources that we can use for composing sermons and homilies. Yeah. yeah. So we have Pietro Carlo, right? Who who put quotation. Okay, he, he composed a text called the Legendarium. Right? And it's, it's basically a collection of exemplars, right? uh, examples and, and stories that preachers can use for their sermons. Right? And so he, he used uh, Marcos Polo's text and he quoted from it. Right? That's right. So the, legend, the Legendarium is a collection of lives of the saints, stories, of the lives of the saints and the martyrs. Right? And he derived it from multiple sources. One of them was Marco Polo's text. And then we have um, Nicoluccio, right? uh, who, who quoted uh, Marco Polo's text in one sermon. So we have a record of that sermon. Right? And the last Italian friar that we can observe today is Filipino of Ferrara. Right? He, uh, Filipino wrote a, a text of uh, aids for preaching. Right? It's called Liber de Introduzione Loquendi. Right? And he finished it around 1347. Yes. So here, uh, here he collects what, what are called exemplar. Uh, short stories, and it, it, it's, it's a record of over 400 examples of morality stories of um, exa uh, stories of examples that people can can use for for preaching and there's I found another example of a Dominican friar who was who worked outside um, Italy so there's an English friar who also used uh, Marco Polo's text, Thomas Whaley's, and he composed a text, the Moralitates, on the Old Testament. Moralitates Super Vetum Testamentum. Right? And it was completed around 1327. So the Moralitates are mm, Christian interpretations of people and stories from the from the old testament and they are also used for preaching purposes like we 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 draw a moral from the story of the life of sarah or, or, or jacob and then we, we we urge people to live and imitate those virtues right and so uh, Thomas Whaley's completed the, the Mor Moralitates on the book of Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Joshua, Isaiah, and Ruth. And he included quotations from Marcos Polo's text. So, so when the Dominican friars began to, to use Marcos, Marcos Polo's text, then it gave some credibility. They, they attributed an authority to this source. So this, this it seemed that a, a good number of theologians in the Dominican order took Marcos Polo's text quite seriously. They thought that it was credible. Right? Of course, it, it was disputed uh, in that time, whether or not the work should be believed in its entirety or in part. Right, so the conclusion for today, right? So, uh, praise to the Dominicans of Italy, right? They they made a significant contribution to transmitting Marcos Polo's text. Uh, thanks to them, uh, we have a Latin version that was widely circulated, right? So some friars did take. Uh, Marco Polo seriously, his stories and his records seriously. Right? And thanks to Francesco, the 
the records of um, India, Middle East, and Cathay, China, was spread into. Knowledge of this East went into different parts of Europe. Right? And the text was also used in a scientific way. Right? They, they were, uh, the friars referred to Marcos Polo's text when they were writing a text on, on history and um, to understand geography right? and also to uh, discover stories and preaching aids. Right? So here are some of the references that I consulted when uh, I was doing this research. Thank you.